So uh, what what language is that? Jolson. Ohio. <laughs> Was it Cantonese? Equivalent to uh, uh, Ni Hao, right? But all right, cool. Cool. All right. Good morning, everybody. Really good to see you. Thank you again for attending our daily Forex trading strategy session. I appreciate your loyalty and the hard work you put into improving your trading. My name is Wayne McCall. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com and ECN. That it uh, not only offers traders around the world Forex, but opportunities to trade energies, metals, stock indices, and binary options. It's like the Xanad for uh, Forex traders. So we do these sessions every 7.30 in the morning. Um, Monday through Thursday here at Forex Today and every Friday at fxstreet.com. If you're watching a recording, uh, like a video, or you watch, uh, or you're reviewing this on a website, would you please leave a comment and a like? Again, you know you're going to get what an hour, hour and a half of hardcore analysis. You know, move your mouse all the way over those 27 pixels to the little like button. Would you do that? I think your mother would be ashamed if you didn't. So don't disappoint me. Don't disappoint your mother. <laughs> right? Come on. And then the, eat your vegetables, huh? Make your mama proud. So hey, Forex is risky, not appropriate for everyone. You might try to mitigate this risk by uh, reviewing your past performance. But guess what? It's not indicative of future results. What you did yesterday isn't necessarily what you're going to do today. What happened yesterday isn't necessarily what will happen today. So never risk money you cannot afford to lose. So good to see you. Um, I guess we'll start with our USD CAD. This is what we set up yesterday on our hourly chart. What do you think? Rod caught it, huh? Good morning. Good for you, Rod. It was perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Good for you, huh? Nice little move. That's what we have if you want to see what the plan was. So our bottom was kind of in here. You know, and it's kind of off of that. that. That was why we kind of picked this area. So go back to the hourly chart. There you go. Now, how many people here have been working on price action as I've been training it for, well, forever, I guess, of using support and resistance, even little micro support and resistance? Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, up, double top, stop buying. Yeah. So we'll look at this on a smaller time frame. Uh, what, even a five-minute chart, I suppose. Look at all these things, right? Consolidation, higher, high, higher, low, right? So this would be the up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down. Buy up, 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 down, down. Buy up, 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 down, down. Buy up, 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 down, down. Buy up, 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 down, down, down. Oh, red flag, red flag. We're, we're basically uh, uh, too much of a pullback because it was up, 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 down, down, down. Right? 55 is in control. 21 is dead. That predicts a double top. Up, 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 top, top. No! Down, 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 up, 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 triple top, no! Right on the midpoint cycle level. Down, 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 lower, low, lower, high, short, lower, low, right? For example, 
every time you make like these lows here, once you make a lower low, you use the previous low to be your, your projected new high. Down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 down. So now we're kind of looking at this little congestion area as a possible sell again. Okay, or if you're a bull, of course, what you're hoping is this whole thing gets fibbed. And you get one of these things. Okay, you back out, so I'll do that by going to a 15. And you hope maybe it comes down to 32.50 and then heads back up if you're a bull. Okay, but I had a lot of questions about, you know, kind of skip scalping your way in the direction. Well, that's how you do it. Can't do it down. Yeah, but that part. Well, that, that's perfectly acceptable. So if your bias is long USD CAD, the down, down, down stuff is not necessarily what you're doing. But you would be waiting to buy it right now, in fact, right? You see on this hourly, the 21 is busted and the 55 is in control. That suggests that at best this is going to go to 33.50 again and then stop. Rod says he watched the video of my 5.8 EMA trading last night, and it was very interesting. Well, that's good. I think the first time I did that publicly was 2005. It was the very first Forex Trading Expo. Where were you, dude? <laughs> Where were you, Rod? Yeah. Yeah, probably, a eh, Rod? Yeah. Probably. All right, so Coolio, um, another way of playing this is if you're a bull, you might you you might be playing it as a mean reversion. And I can't really zoom in any closer than this. Let's see if I can. And somebody is pr probably thinking, come down, tickle the five, and then back up. Okay. Another way of doing it is if you were trading like a 15-minute chart, you'd be looking at something like this. So, you know, this could come down, touch the daily 5 EMA, and back up if you were a bull. Which means we haven't quite hit the lower low yet. Okay? So I'm thinking that 32.50 to 32.00 area could get pretty interesting if that's what you want to do. Forex dot today, Albert. It should be right there. Yeah, quit your yelling. How dare you type to me that way? Uh, so there's a couple of ways you can do this. All the videos are down the right-hand side. So here it is right here, Forex Trading Strategies session. Okay. That's probably the fastest way of getting there.
Isn't that pretty? Yeah, I'd say that's the uh, that's going to be the fastest. Beep beep. You are not alone. Okay, you got that? Forex dot today. I am here with you. All right, so the pig is just hard to hard to look away I guess it's just beautiful huh look at that so we got the extension that we were hoping for and then look at this beautiful collapse nice let's see if it's tradable lower low lower high sell lower low but for sure now you could argue these ones this low here is without a doubt lower than gesture. Okay? So up, 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 sell, down, down, down. Clearly has made a lower low. So this area gets brought over for your potential new sell area. All right? So down, 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 down. And right, up, up, sell, down, 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 up, up, sell, down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 down. Guess what? On the next up, up, you might want to sell it. Okay. What And that 80-20, what we were talking about is now that it's made a lower low, somewhere between 0, 0, and 20 is probably where you want to sell. We might have already done it. So it's moving really fast. Powell says, how do you know when to sell? Sell near the 5 EMA. Now, if you're using the EMA from either 2005 or yesterday, depending, right? <laughs> depending, right, Rod? Um, what does it say? It says you get the 2155 to cross down, right? And then you sell the next 5A cross. There's one here. And there's one here. And that's basically it. So you've been short pound dollar since, uh, I don't know, London Open. But you see all these squiggly little lines? The reason they're there is they're dynamic levels of support and resistance. So you you're supposed to sell at the 5 or 21, right? Just sell it. Here we're riding the 5, which means it can't possibly move any faster. So you'd be a fool to buy it. You're just ignorant. you ignorant. you just ignorant. That's my Michael Jackson. It'd just be like ridiculously dumb. Uninformed about that. I didn't mean to insult you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, who the hell would buy this? So. So you should sell it. Not, not saying that ah, it can't fall too far. It can't fall any farther. <laughs> of course it could fall farther. She whiz. And then, of course, you keep doing that until it stops working. Isn't that nice? Uh, which 200, Casey?
All right, cool. Now, Euro, in contrast, uh, you know, that was one of the big ones we were talking about. And by the way, let's just look at this because it's so pretty. Cool. Okay. You notice how the plan is down, right, on this one? Cool. Um, the Euro USD on Monday, one of the things we talked about it was staying calm and staying focused. And that even though Euro USD was going up like a bajillion pips, I, I'm still looking to be a bear because nothing fundamentally changed. All right? All we need is a lower high. All we need, right? Seems like there was a song in there. All we need is a lower high. And uh, that looks like it. All we need is love. So, um, yeah, that could be it. Could be very nice. That would be most, because I'm not a bull. I made a lot of money on this, but I'm not a bull. Baby. So that's that. That's cool. I like that. Me likey. So you can see it's been heavily sold today, this pair. So at some point, it's going to want to take a breather. This four-hour chart tells me it's going to come down 61.8%. Cool. How oh, nice. So now what you need to do is plan your behavior in the near future. If you were a bull, what would you do? If you were a bull, what you're going to want to see is a rise up to the 21, maybe even through the one, but I've already drawn it. So, And then you want to have it come down in here and consolidate a little bit and eventually make a higher high. And then you would buy this, and you'd be long. Okay? That's what a bull would do. And then if you're a bear, you're going to have this, basically, this whole area fibbed. And it'll be like a drop with a three-wave correction and then a drop. Okay? Now, what it does up here, whether it falls or rises, couldn't tell you. Okay, depends on market participants. But that's what the bulls and bears are thinking about right now. Okay. Uh, George, I think you're asking why? You know, like, was it Sir Edmund Hillary that was asked why he climbed Everest? And his response was, because it's there. It's the same thing. It's, it's support. That's it. But by definition, people are going to buy it, even if they're wrong. Why are we? Well, that I can't tell you. Oh, why down? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought I showed you. Can I look at that? The 21 is breached. So we're, we're doing a step down. Where is it Now, where is it going to go? If the 21 has been breached, where is it going to go? 
55. Where's the 55? The 618. Done. Next. So if I go too fast, ask questions. That's why I'm here. A lot of times I'll, I'll just, it takes me like less than one second to see it, right? So I don't mind spending five minutes discussing what I see in, 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 a, in 0.5 seconds. It's the whole point that I'm here. Okay, get it? Now, it is moving up and all that kind of stuff, but I think if it falls, it's going to fall fast because we're breaching stops now, right? So, so yeah, it's, it's just lovely, man. Raining pips again. Demeter asked, four hours versus daily? I don't see a difference. Okay. So it's all the same to me. So let, let's put it this way. I'm on a four hour. Are we making a higher high right now? So don't buy it. <laughs> right? I mean, like, that's it. Okay. Someone on the short term is likely to buy it here, as I've already indicated. But there's a very high chance that it's not correct. And if they do buy it and move it up, it'll go up to probably, <clears throat> let's say, sort of this area. But that's why I already drew it, right? So kind of sort of somewhere in there. And then they'll find out they're wrong. All I need is love. Okay. But you wouldn't see any of that on a four-hour chart. So think of it this way. Once you've made your decision, you wait for the market to be wrong, and then you correct the market. Your job, you're like, you're like the, the pit police. If it's going the wrong way, get ready to sell it. Now, if you're a bull, you better get ready, dude. And remember what we talked about yesterday. Don't buy it just because it's at support, because then you're gambling. You're saying, I bet support's going to hold. You know what I mean? <clears throat> That's just degenerate gambling. And you'll get caught on things like yesterday. I think we were kind of in here when I did that speech. I think we're here, right? The 3A2 and it skyrocketed up. And I said, look, if you want to buy it, it's at the 3A2, but don't buy it just because it's at support. Right? Do you remember what we talked about? Wait for the consolidation, wait for the higher high, then buy the higher low. I mean, my gosh, what, 20 minutes? Just nothing but that one message, right? It's not that it's at support that's important. It's that it's reversing that support that's important. So did we get what did we get a long entry here? No. Down here probably did, especially on a smaller time frame. Consolidate, consolidate, higher, high, high, low, long gone. We're at resistance. Sell just because we're at resistance? No. But the lower low definitely puts you short, right? You see the lower low? You've been trained like, a, like an assassin to sell that. Those are the free pips, guys.
Those are the ones. But is it is it the resistance that's important? Well, it's important. But what's the missing piece? The reversal pattern at resistance or the reversal pattern at support. And then you follow that up with trend trading. You understand that? It's the recognize of change of trend and then trade in the new direction of the trend. Down, 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 up, up, sell, down, 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 up, up, sell, down, 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 up, up, sell. Got the whole day planned. Now what the hell are we going to do with the rest of the day? It's all been planned out. Okay, cool. It's just trading, right? Cool. Baby. All right. If you were a bull, you would find this area interesting, wouldn't you? What are the two most interesting places as a bull? Kind of like right where we are now. And the next one would be sort of in here, right? But I bet you, as a bull, someone's got it priced like this. How does that feel? I think that's how I have it on the other chart. Anyways, it's the same thing. But I'm not convincing you to be a bear. I'm convincing you to do your own analysis, pick it, bias, and trade in that direction, right? But don't you think someone's going to want along this? Okay, so if that's what you want to do, as I was saying, you know, get ready. But my spider senses are tingling, and to me they say it needs to come down a little bit more before it goes up. And the reason I say that, it's... Uh, you see how yesterday we already came back and touched the five and immediately bounced off of it? We, the bulls had their chance and they failed. You see? Imagine this. Since this wick is here, there was a time when this was a solid red candle. And then it went up. Significantly. Right? Right? which means it was a green candle on a, on a four-hour chart, and it failed. It failed to make the higher high. It, was, it, it's, you know, it, it, it didn't achieve its destiny, so to speak. So that's the, um, that's the lower high I was talking about earlier that's so important here. The fact that it failed is the lower high. But it doesn't mean it's dead for the, for the bulls just probably come down to the next level. And again, it sort of looks like a 618, 50% to 618 kind of issue. You 
Yeah, DeBista is correct as far as the reason I do support resistance and you know why I say a bull would do this and a bear would do that. Um, if you're interested in like scalping, how could you possibly be a consistent scalper if you have no idea what the the other participants are going to do? If you don't know where the bulls are going to buy and if you don't know where the bears are going to sell, how could you ever be consistent in, in, in scalping if you're trading both ways, right? So it seems, you know, so the way I like to set things up and say, well, a bull would do this here, a bear would do that there, and they'd be ready and identify which team is in control. Is it going to be the bulls today or the bears today? Well, I don't want to bet on that, nor do I want to try to be the one in control because I'm, I'm not that big. I'm a peon, all right? So I, I kind of need to figure out what the other guys are going to do before they do it and then get ready. That's why on these things, I, I, I'm looking at it where I'm going to sell, which is up here. And if I were going to buy, it would be right in this zone where we are now. So it's like a scientific methodology where you're, you have an, a hypothesis. This could be support. Bulls could buy it here for various reasons. Therefore, if I see a, a reversal pattern, I can confirm my hypotheses and take a, appropriate action. Just imagine it as a protocol. If we're at support and you observe a reversal pattern at support, buy the next dip. Mike, the best one in the whole world, the one that I talk about every single day, the one I've already drawn out for you today, double bottom with a higher high at support, or double top with the lower low at resistance. It's not the most complicated, it's, right? Probably not even the best, but you could have a, a successful trading career of just that. <clears throat> so like the one I already showed you, let, let's do the other one here. You see this one, Mike? That's the easy one. Okay. You are not alone. Okay. So we're we're at the fifty percent retracement of the top to the bottom, which itself is a lower low. So someone else is gonna have it fib the other way, but well, I guess I'll do that too. Okay, so I don't have my drawing tool out right now, but you, you understand how we made a low, lower high, then we did another lower low, right? So what am I supposed to do? What's the plan? Sell somewhere between the 3, 2, and 6, 1, 8, which is right in here. So let's mark that. Okay? So we're in there. Somewhere in there we're expecting this to reverse back down. Okay? Okay? This is logical, simple stuff. Oh, snap, it made a lower low relative to these, right? Because this was a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, lower low. What the? That's exactly what I'm looking for. And it kicked off exactly in my zone. Oh, my gosh. What do you do? Right? Lower high in this case. Which what where would where do you sell a lower high after a lower low at resistance? Somewhere between the three A two and six one eight Fibonacci retracement, just like that. Down, 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 up, up, down, and, and so on and so forth. So a a reversal pattern within a reversal pattern within a folly market.
Sí. Do, 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 do. Okay. So again, if uh, if there were bulls, this is where they would buy it. Very easily seen. Okay. Um, oh, my dollar index is look. It's so good. Mm -mm -mm. Let's take a look at our sweetie pie Aussie dollar. Cool. It's just looking nice. Beautiful little breakout. Lovely. With your smile so warm and your teeth so green. All right. Just lovely stuff. Luf little your mum. Yeah, it's amazing. Hey, Rod, how there's like at least a million traders using MT4, 950,000 of them don't use it properly. It's crazy. At least you're the part of the smart money now. Alone, 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 oh my. All right. So we're through the pivots, unfortunately, right? Very difficult in weeks like this. And now remember, next week our pivots are going to be messed up because we have such unusually large ranges for this week. So next week we're going to have these giant pivots and we're not going to hit them. So mark my words. Next week we will be caught between the weekly R1 and the weekly S1. Is that nice? I already know it. How, how awesome is that? So like Mike, maybe uh, Mike says he's still struggling. Um, what some people will do is they'll treat this as the reversal pattern, right? And they'll say, okay, I'll call this a double bottom with a higher high, which is valid. The only thing is you're trying to reverse the entire market, which I think is ridiculously risky. I think we could agree that this market seems down generally speaking. So even if this reverses up for a while, it's not likely to reverse everything. So I would rather you simply say, this is bearish, I'm going to sell. And I've been teaching you this from the first day you and I met. Identify the direction that you think the market's going. And if you say bear, you're only allowed to sell and you're only allowed to sell at resistance.
Yeah. Oh well, Mike. Oh well. So that's what you do is you pick your lines and you prepare. Yep. So this still looks fine to me. Looks really nice. I've been a bear on the Aussie dollar now for about three years, I think. No reason to change. Still a bear. <laughs> That's great, huh? Yeah, I see you're on the monthly S1, but it doesn't matter to me because my bias is faced, uh, based on fundamentals. So you're right. It's a good call. I do see that monthly pivot. I don't care. Just sell, their, sell at resistance. It's all there is over and over and over again. You guys want to trade durable goods together? Yeah, durable goods is um, it's a volatile release. Uh, but what I'm trying to use it for is sort of like you know, to me, it's one way of using it is as a gauge of real estate. So let's say you buy an existing home, right? You're part of the existing home sales data, right? You you bought a you bought a used house. It still has the southwestern theme from 1980 in it, right? It's got pink walls and turquoise accents, and you say, "Oi, vey, really?" <laughs> hey, it's uh, it's Miami Vice in the kitchen. So, what's the first thing you're going to do? You want to you want to flip this bad boy, and buy yourself a, a Ferrari, right? So what's the first thing you do with this house? Yeah, rip out the uh, rip out the uh, the appliances and all the other you know rip everything out basically hire a whole bunch of people right? <laughs> hire a whole bunch of people, fix the place up. So the durable goods part is going to be the, the stainless steel appliances that you buy. Okay. So it's good. I mean, it's good. It's quite volatile. The way that it used to work, and I don't believe it's the same anymore, but the President of the United States had the, uh, the privilege, let's say, of whenever the economy was slowing down, he could pick up the phone, call Saudi Arabia, and say, Saudi Arabia, you're going to place an order for a whole bunch of 747s from Boeing. 
and Boeing was such a big employer, and the money the, the money was so big that it, it was important, and it was a good way to sort of prop up the economy. So we like to strip out that data and kind of look at it, but it's still very volatile. But again, I think if you're getting good durable good orders, it, it just shows that the economy is is healthy despite what's going on globally, or the local economy is pretty good because the average Joe on the street might be hearing about the problems in China. They don't know about it like we do. But they're hearing about it, but at the end of the day, they already bought the house, right? They bought the house three months ago, 45-day closing period. And, you know, I mean, the China thing is just something they hear on the news for five minutes and go, oh, well, and off they go, right? They still have contractors showing up at the house. They're still going to do the work and all that kind of stuff. But a good durable good number would be just, you know, would be, ex would be welcomed, let's say. So here's the Kiwi dollar. We, we set this up for a short, do you remember? And I said it's not just that we're at the 3A2. It's you should look for the, the smaller reversal pattern. I kind of sound repetitive, don't I? That's what I drew for you. Okay, I said it should make a lower low, then a lower high, and then you sell. Well, it took a little longer, probably a time of day, but wouldn't it be fair to draw it like this? Isn't this the exact same? The only difference is the timing of it. Okay. But on a macro level, it's just an entry. Maybe it continu continues mission down. That'd be great. It's plausible. Heart is very, very strong right now, and the commodities are doing very well. Very well, but the dollar's not weak. But for example, the Canadian dollar's stronger than the U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar is quite strong. How nice! What it's telling me is the hedge funds are, are getting back into their positions at a massive rate. Just massive. This is a massive move back into what they were doing before. Now remember, the only reason, we very, very calmly talked about this, the only reason that the euro got so strong is that Lots and lots and lots of traders, right? The, the majority of the market was heavily net short the Euro USD, heavily, based on one trading idea. The Fed was definitely going to raise interest rates in September. Then they found out it's not definite, and they got wiped out. They had to get out of that position and realign. Now, remember... I said, I don't know where and I don't know when. It could have been that, that day we talked about it. I said, but it could be two weeks. I mean, we just don't know. But at some point, those same traders are going to get back in. Because nothing has changed, but their position is wrong. So they might have been short at, you know, let's say at 110, waiting for, for parity, right? 
And then they're like, oh my gosh, the Fed's not going to raise interest rates? Holy smokes. And they get out, and the other guys get out, and then some stops are hit, and those guys get out. And, and everyone between 110 and 113 are just getting wiped out, stops, and panic to get out, and everything's being offset. And then we get all the way to 115, and they're like, or, or sorry, 117, and they're like, all right, I'll get back in here. I could ride this out. 170 a hell of a lot better than 110 or 112, but nothing fundamentally has changed. They just, well, I guess the fundamentally changed uh, aspect of this is that those that were betting on the Fed hike in September had to readjust their fundamental strategy. And they're like, well, if it ain't September, it's going to be December. I'm even hearing talk on Bloomberg today, they're like, well, maybe it'll be an October move. Because December will just be too late, and it'll be too difficult because it'll be the end of the year. And Wow, these guys are jittery. I mean, if you think about it, who gives a rat's... <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> who, who cares whether it's September, October, November, or December? On the long run, it's all irrelevant. Unless you're, you know, really short-term trading, and maybe that's the problem, right? Yeah, you're right, Gregers. Talk too much. So, I can tell you that up until the Fed taper was announced, the Fed taper, the Fed taper, the beginning of the reduction of quantitative, quantitative easing. Up until that day, I was a bear in the U.S. dollar. Because that's what quantitative easing does, <clears throat> devalues the currency. So I was a bear. And we talked about it for months and months and months in advance. The day that it's actually announced, it's that that's the day I become bullish. Because it's not that it's Bullish. It's just every single day they 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 you know buy less bonds. It, every day becomes less bearish. So it's the beginning of bullishness. So that was the exact day I switched from hardcore bear to hardcore bull, and that's it. I'm done with that conversation. I'm still bullish. And even then, when the euro USD rallies up five or six hundred pips, what do I tell you? Very calmly. Oh, I'm I'm still a bear. I might be I might be up 400 pips profit, but I'm still a bear on the Euro USD. And right now it feels like everyone's getting right back in. <clears throat> you can tell by like the velocity of this moving down. It's just it's quite fantastic. So we hit 80, right? So this is, we should be ready for the move up. What was the plan? We were going to sell between 0, 0, and 20, right? So anywhere here, actually, anywhere, this, this whole area is sell zone. And then, of course, you could fib it, which is the other technique.
guess you'd probably have it like this. You are not alone. Yeah, it is, Demeter. Jackson Hole is always big, except this year Yellen's not going. But uh, it has been very big. Bernanke said some things at Jackson Hole that were huge. From left to right. Why would you draw it right to left? <laughs> Rick's trying to invent new ways. That'd be that'd be really odd. What? No. Gerbils 2.0% above the minus 0.4% expected. Back month devised up to 4.1% from 3.4% ex transport and 0.6% is three tenths higher than expected. The back month devised up three tenths to 1.0%. Capital goods orders 2.2% better than the 0.3% expected with back month devised higher there as well. Capital goods shipments and 0.6% is two tenths higher than expected with back month devised up six tenths to 0.9%. Look at that, the 382 predicts a 1618, and we've already hit it. Yeah, it's a good number. Very, very good number. Shocking. You are not alone. Very nice, very, very nice. And this is, this is, oh, we hit the 4 hour 21 on the USD CAD. Time to move that one north. But that was our plan already. Okay. See the daily five? Remember? Daily five. Four hour twenty one ish. U.S. bond markets under further pressure following the stronger than expected readings for durable goods, particularly the headline data. Very nice. Order is also well ahead of expectations of 2.2% pushing the euro to 113.59. So we've seen about a 40 pip drop in the euro while U.S. interest rates have popped for another three or four basis points up to 2.15% now in the U.S. 10 year. Down three quarters of a point from yesterday. Awesome. You see that? Remember how I showed you the guys the 10 year T note? That it was 1.95. Remember that? This was like 48 hours ago. It's back to 2.2. Just fantastic. Fantastic week. The third week of August. It's been like raining pips. Love. Awesome. Third week of August, my favorite week of the year. Oh, Demeter, what pips in my pocket? I don't even remember what song that would be. So it'd be interesting if USD CAD wakes up. It's a very, very good day. Very, very nice. Mike, how about a reversal pattern? Find your support. <laughs> Great. Wait for a reversal pattern and buy the replacement. The same as 10 minutes ago. So the part that I'm interested in is we're tickling the 4 hour 21.
beep 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 Look at that. We're trading it on a one minute chart just to catch it because it's so awesome. Oh, 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 okay. I think I know what you're saying. You're saying because I draw fibs, not right to left or left to right, but from down to up. This is what you mean. Yeah, all right. I thought you had right. I'm, I thought you meant from a bottom to a future top. No, 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 no. Yes, I do draw them upside down. You are correct. The reason for that is when I draw my fibs, it'll also plot out the extensions. Because if I get a 3A2 Fibonacci retracement, it's going to project out to the 1618. So I can do it all in one shot. So yes, it looks like you're doing it backwards, but or that I'm doing it backwards. But that's just because I'm trying to be more efficient. So I can see my retracement now and my extension. Why would I do it twice? Okay. Usually, since we're kicking off a psych level, we'll get a bigger pullback. Awesome. We'll see. Oh, Mike, you're, you're on the four hour on the USD CAD? Let's look at that. All right, Mikey. Okay. So you're saying it's overbought and you want it to fall, is that right? No, but what do you you have a question about it? I'm trying to figure out what your question is, so I can answer it appropriately. What would you do? Conflict. All right, so good. Yeah, but you're using a stochastic oscillator, and it's making you worried. But you shouldn't use oscillators in a trend. It's not a trend trading tool. Yeah, but you're using the wrong tour, the, the wrong tool. But if it's trending. You buy dips at support. So you, you can measure it any way you want. And you use previous resistance should now be support. So you're going to buy it right there. It has nothing to do with your oscillator. Of course it's overbought, Mike. Everyone is buying this. That's why the market's going up. It's bullish. It's going to be overbought because nobody is selling it. You see?
Well, would you say this is a downtrend, Mike? Okay. Would you say it's moving sideways? Does this look like a market that is consolidating? It was. Well, let's try to see that one. Okay. It's moving up. It's moving up. It's moving up. Moving up. It's moving up. It's moving up. And it has now made a higher high. It's moving up. I don't know. It seems like it's to me, Mike. Skip what lower lows? All right, well, let, let, let's do this one again. Um, template. And we'll do a scan this time. All right, let's do it again. Okay, here's the lower low. Anything lower than that is bearish. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're, uh, oh, well, so you're arguing over this or this. That's probably where you're getting all go goofy on this, huh? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, fine. All right, let's talk about it. If you have a fundamental bias, it makes it easier. Now, you say total confusion, and this is where you frustrate me, Mike, because I don't mind working with you every day, and I know you're trying hard, but boy, you bring negativity. Just, it's just amazing to me. So you got to check that at the door, man. So like total confusion, <laughs> like I can see how you're having trouble, and sometimes you could say, well, Wayne, this one faked me out, it made a lower low, and I'm like, that's, okay, that's cool. You know what I mean? But total confusion. Holy vey, don't be a drama queen. There's just no way there's total confusion here. This is like the easiest chart, Mike. It's going up. Okay. Now... Yeah, I can see how you could get you can get fooled on this one, which is fine. But all it results in is a losing trade. But it, again, I wouldn't say total confusion. I have no idea what's going on here. Oh, come on, Mike. Look, we all have losing trades, right? So, yeah, okay, uh, you can have losing trades, but this is trending up. We don't have to make it more complicated. High, 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 low, 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 high, high, oh, yeah, okay, this one, you took a loss. And then what did it do? High, 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 low, high, 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 low, high, high, right? 
But and this one was a dramatic drop. Okay. Again, maybe you took a loss in here. Right? But in here you'll see it stopped making higher highs and a higher low. So you take a break. Giant pullback. Again, right? Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. And then every once in a while, then suddenly it'll make it'll consolidate, and at least you'll be short term short. But no, no total confusion is too dramatic. So let's go somewhere else. So like I said on our first day, Mike, I said, I want you to do one thing and one thing only. Right? Pick a bias on one currency. I think it was USD. And if you're a bull on the USD, there are a million trades here. And then there are lots of opportunities to stop trading. If all you could do is buy. You know, like for example... If you bought this at in our sweet spot, somewhere between the 382 and 618 Fibonacci retracement, and put your stop below the previous low, I mean, there's almost I, there's nowhere on this chart where you would have lost money. Okay. Because you know you would have been, let's say, long at your at your three eight two or the fifty percent. Your stops down here, and well, yeah, it came down to the seven eight six and then went up. Oh well. So what are you going to do now? So let plan out the future as a bull. Remember, if you're a bear, you don't do anything. Just wait for the bullish setup. So I'm going to use this low, and I believe somewhere between the 3A2 and 618 Fibonacci retracement would be a good opportunity to buy. Okay? And you put your stop below this low. Okay? So your stop's down here maybe, and that's that. Okay. Oops. And you'll know you're wrong when your stop gets hit. Or the 21. It's to me it's all the same thing. Now we're just splitting hairs over pips. I want you to buy at support, Mike. I don't care if you use a fib Price action, moving averages, pivot points, doesn't matter to me. Ideally, lots of them, right? Well, that's why you're losing money then, Mike. And I think we did talk about that. I want you to go back and do nothing but that. For, for a year, do nothing but improve at identifying support and resistance. No, you're losing money because you gave up on the coin toss. You're confused on the USD CAD because you don't have a bias. There's nothing confusing there unless you have no idea what's going on, which is fair. So you substitute knowledge with an artificial bias. Either way, you're going to know whether you're in the business of buying at support or selling at resistance. If you don't know what that is, you're going to fail. I don't care what strategy you use. If you don't know if you're go if you're a buyer or a seller, then forget about it. Honestly, that's why I said pick a bias. And then, if you know, we solve that problem, then we go to the next one, and I'll say, okay, so you're a bull. You're going to buy dips in an uptrend at support. And if you can't do that, then, like like you said, you can't identify an obvious trend. Or you suck at finding support, but that's all there is to it.
because you've already decided on your bias. So if you're a bull, you have to ask yourself, is this predominantly bullish or bearish? If it's predominantly bearish and you're a bull, don't do anything. Take the week off. Go golfing. And then when it turns, you're buying dips in a rally. It's That's the easy part. The, the difficult is, the part is patience. Yeah, the concept is easy. So there, so here's the thing, Mike. You know what to do, and I, and I think you've walked away from it. But you say now that the theory is easy. Well, it is easy. Okay? The second part is now, if you're a bull, you ask yourself, is it trending? Is it trending up? The answer is yes, you have permission to move on to the next stage. These are all your rules of engagement. Okay? So if the answer is yes, you're a bull and the market is trending up, you're going to buy retracements. And you're going to place a stop below the low. So I don't even care. Now you don't even need support, Mike. Couldn't even care less now. Just buy retracements in an uptrend if you're bullish. Don't get it confused with, you know, Wayne only, what do I tell you? I only buy red candles. So, so you wait for a falling market and you start buying it and you're like, Wayne, this totally sucks. I'm losing money. I'm buying all these red candles. I'm like, yeah, but the market's bearish, dude. What the hell's wrong with you? Nobody buys in a falling market. You buy in a rising market with red cans because, by definition, a five-year-old knows you buy low. That's it, right? I mean, am I wrong in that one? I think I can stand up, you know, in, in, in the court of Forex and, and, and throw myself at the mercy of the court and say, I buy dips in an uptrend, right? I buy low. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I lost money, but I did the buying low in an uptrend. And the gall dang market reversed on me. It happens. But I'd rather face the judge and jury with a loss and say, well, uh, the market was up, I was buying dips, and the whole market reversed on me, and I lost money. Oops. Uh, more often than not, the market trends in such a way that a lower, a higher high creates a higher low, which then creates a new higher high, and you make money. So try that. Maybe your support and resistance is the issue. All I want you to do, Mike, is find a trending market, And for the love of all things good and holy and spiritual and kind and peaceful in the world, trade in the direction of that market. And put your stuff, if, it, if the market is up like this, okay, so like, let's say you buy this following move that I've identified somewhere. I don't care what you do. Somewhere in here. For any reason you want, somewhere from between this low and this high, anywhere, for whatever reason, don't use any indicators, don't use, don't use oscillators, don't do anything. Just have a complete naked chart. If you buy low somewhere in here, because you think it's not just, don't just degenerately buy it, but if you see that, if you feel like it's consolidating or potentially at least not falling anymore, Buy it and place your stop below the lowest low. And the only way you can lose money is if the whole entire market, possibly trillions of dollars worth of money, reverses course. That's the only way you could possibly lose. If the entire world decides it wants to change. It's not noise. And if you say, well, Wayne, that's like, you know, 200 pips. Well, cut your lot size, man. Okay.
Okay. Stick with it. Hey, I got to jump, babe, but it's been awesome. Please leave a like on YouTube videos. It's important and even better. Take the whole whopping, you know, if you can spare 28 seconds of your life, would you leave a comment? Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. And keep it up, guys. It's worth the effort. Keep focused. Cheers.